Hello everyone! Welcome sa panibago nating series about research. At sa video na to, sisimula nating magsulat ng chapter 1 using introduction. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. Chapter 1 is labeled as the problem in its background at ito yung nagdi-discuss ng existence ng problem kaya ka nag-lead sa isang research. Ito yung mga parts ng chapter 1. Meron kang introduction, background, theoretical framework, conceptual framework, SOP or statement of the problem, hypothesis, scope and delimitation, significance, and definition of terms. Ito yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng parts ng chapter 1 at sa video na, nga na ito, pag-uusapan natin yung first part which is introduction. Pag sinabi natin introduction, of course, ini-introduce niya yung mga variables na involved. So, di ba may title ka at meron ka dong independent at dependent variable. Dito mo sila sisimulang i-describe, i-introduce kung saan ba sila galing, meron ba silang pinagmulang law, theory, or batas mismo. Ito dapat ay makakakatch ng attention ng mga readers at kailangan makonvince mo sila na itong topic mo is worth studying. I-orient mo dito yung mga readers kung bakit mo nagustuhan or bakit mo naisip pag-aralan itong topic sa research mo. Pwede rin naman na mag -e examine ka ng iba-ibang theories tapos ipapakita mo dito na yung mga theories na yon ay contradicting or may gap, may question na hindi pa nasasagot at itong research na to na i-conduct mo, yun ang makaka-bridge ng gap between those two different theories or laws. The following are the tips kung paano magsulat ng introduction. Of course, you can start with a brief but provocative quotation. Ito, lagi itong ginagamit kaya minsan nagiging cliche na din pero pwede mo pa rin subukan. You start with a certain quotation, a popular proverb or words coming from a famous person na sa tingin mo ay related sa yung study. Or you can... Introduced by giving facts or statistics, figures na galing sa trusted sources na makakakatch ng attention ng reader mo. Pag nakuha mo na yung attention nila using these techniques, pwede mo nang sundan ng brief background of events na nangyari in the past tapos nag sa present issue na, na pag-aaralan mo. Ito rin ay kailangan naglalaman ng firm stand mo para nga ma-bridge yung mga gap between theories na pwedeng contradicting or sa tingin mo ay may kulang. Dito mo rin isusulat yung reason kung bakit mo gustong i-replicate yung isang study na complete na. Kadalasan ito ang laman ng last paragraph ng introduction. Mamaya bibigyan ko kayo ng example ng sarili kong introduction sa sarili kong research. O kaya naman, kung gusto mong makagawa ng panibagong theory, kailangan sa introduction pa lang, ipakita mo na or ipresent mo na, na yung mga theories na existing ay kulang or hindi pa sapat para i-explain yung topic na gusto mong pag-aralan. So, sample introduction tulad ng sabi ko, ito ay sarili kong title. Ito yung isang research topic na napili ko at ito yung kanyang title. Spiral Progression Approach in Mathematics as Perceived by the Teachers in Public Junior High School of Santa Rosa, Laguna. So, ito yung sample introduction ng research title na binigay ko kanina. Kung mapapansin nyo, dito sa unang sentence pa lang, naglatag na agad ako ng fact that Philippines has been continuously undergoing a shift in its educational system before it finally reached its present state, which is yung K-12 nga ngayon. Nag-start ako by introducing that the Philippine educational system ay nag-undergo ng iba-ibang curriculum until pagdating dito sa second paragraph, may binanggit na ako na law with the Act 10533 that is all about the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013 or yung law na nag-mandate ng K-12. So, diniscuss ko dito kung ano ba yung K-12, pati yung kanyang Department Order Number no. 31 Series of 2012 na naging parang supplemental material for RA-10533. 
afterwards, in-explain ko yung learning competencies for math na vertically and horizontally articulated. Dinefine ko doon yung dalawang variable, vertical and horizontal articulation na nandito naman sa next paragraph. After kong ma-introduce yung setting ng Philippine educational system, pagdating dito sa next paragraph, inintroduce ko na yung theory kung saan nakaangkla yung K-12, which is the constructivism theory. And then, pinaliit ko yung scope. Kung kanina ay constructivism theory, binigyan ko ng bridge papuntang spiral progression approach. Yun na yung approach na ginagamit sa mathematics ngayon, especially sa junior high school. After kong ipakita yung spiral progression approach, binigyan ko ng question dito sa next paragraph para ipakita na yung spiral progression approach ay meron pang gray matter or gray area na kailangan pang pag-researchan. And finally, pagdating sa last paragraph, ito na yung sinasabi ko na rationale ko as a researcher why I conducted this study after citing all the introductions that I did from the previous paragraph. So, ganyan tayo gumawa ng introduction as in parang papahapyawan mo lang yung mga basis mo kung bakit mo naisip pag-aralan yung research topic na meron ka. As I've said, i-introduce mo dito yung mga variables na involved sa study mo. In the next video, pag-uusapan naman natin ang background of the study which is the next part for chapter 1. Thank you for watching! If you learned from this video, please give it a huge thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon. See you on our next video!